and the big thick wool hat so that the hood would keep, keep the wind from penetrating through. Anyway, so I've learned some things the hard way in my life, you know, <laughs> to get the benefit of some of my mistakes here. Okay, SteriPen, there we go. Oh, so again, if you're really worried about viruses, then the, the hard to kill protozoa are easily filtered out and the chemicals will easily kill, like a few drops of iodine or a few drops of Clorox bleach or, um, or a flash of your SteriPen will easily zap those, those viruses that do make it through the filter. So if you're really worried, double treat or boil. Boil will kill them off. Okay, on the, uh, this is a key item in my, in my grab and go kit. And I threw it in here this morning, somewhere in there. But you've probably all seen them. The picture's good enough. The, did you um, want to, at some point you're welcome to show what I have in my go bag. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, yeah, Rick's, Rick's got a much shorter presentation. He's got the, the Indiana Jones go bag instead of the modern <laughs> cool gadget go bag. Works for me. Yeah. <laughs> so when I first climbed El Cap and ran out of, or the, when I ran out of water, I had a battery pack like this big on our last day when we were climbing to find, to get off there so we could find some water and get our misery over. And the headlamp, you know, was big and bulky. And if you bumped the lamp against the wall too hard while that bulb was going, the filament died. Well, these are the modern day equivalent. They're totally waterproof. They have LED light bulbs that are, last forever, essentially, and are extremely rugged, and three tiny little AAA batteries. And it lasts longer than my big 6D cells hanging off my belt lasted back then. So. I tell you, the headlamp, there's two items that are like, well, it looks like three now. <laughs> two items that are often not in my go bag because I'm using them all the time. And I've bought multiples and they're still not in my go bag. And the headlamp is one of them because it's so handy. I use it. I walk the dog. I split wood. I, you know, work on the car, put chains on, whatever. Headlamp, great thing to have. Good for bunkers. Yep. <laughs> this is a colloidal silver generator. That is another item that's never in my go bag, though it is now because I have a backup one, I guess. But uh, colloidal silver generator, and people say, well, you know, why colloidal silver? Why would that be in your go bag? Well, 2,000 years ago, Alexander the Great didn't know a thing about germ theory, but he knew that if he stored water for his troops in silver urns, then they didn't get sick. And if he stored water in wooden barrels or skin bags, then after a few days, something happened to the water and his troops would have diarrhea and vomiting. And, a, and a, a soldier that's running out at both ends is not much good on the battlefield. So it turns out that tiny particles of silver, especially when they have an electric charge in them, have this kind of magical property where they're toxic to all known pathogenic bacteria and non-toxic to human beings. And this part sounds kind of like the tooth fairy in Santa Claus. They also don't kill the probiotic bacteria in your gut, supposedly. And there's actually a scientific explanation for that, that the probiotic bacteria have an extra thick cellular wall that make them very, uh, very tough to stomach acids. And that's why they live so well in your gut, is they can go through a full strength stomach acids and survive. And that extra thick cellular wall also protects them from the action of the silver. And the silver apparently does something to cause them to no, no longer, it, it prevents them from metabolizing oxygen. So they kind of like starve to death um, is the explanation I've heard how silver works. And it was developed by, uh, you were talking about him last night. It, well, this is kind of an interesting background. I thought the guys were the same guys for a while. There's a guy named Robert O. Becker who Robert wrote the Becker. body bioelectric that Rick Miller actually knows or knew. He, well, he died a few years ago. Paper or two with him. Okay. Yeah. And he was an orthopedic surgeon and a brilliant medical researcher, and he researched the body's microelectric healing mechanisms, kind of like semiconductor junction Liquid simulations. Crystal phases, amorphous yeah. semiconductors, yeah. Yeah, incredible, yeah. incredible research. Well, in his research, he found that the charged silver particles were extremely effective at killing bacteria. And in fact, he was able to impregnate like sailcloth with that and put it in wounds on some of his patients that were scheduled for amputation. And it, and it healed the bacterial infections and the bones re-knitted and they didn't have to amputate the limb. So 
That's what he did with bone regeneration using electromagnetic fields. Yes, and he found that the silver is, charged silver particles helps do that. So, fast forward a little, a physicist, Bob Becker. Different Becker. Bob Becker, Robert Beck, oh, no, Bob Beck, it was Robert Bob Beck. Becker Robert was o. the medical Becker. researcher and Bob Beck the physicist. Bob Beck had uh, invented the electronic flash bulb when he was a teenager. And he, he uh, as a teenager, he had like all of the National Geographic people, like the lady that Candace Bergen played in, in Gandhi, coming over to his garage and he would blow glass and make f electronic flash bulbs for them. And um, he sold it for 500 bucks, which to him was like an incredible amount of money and it paid for his last year of college as an undergraduate in like UCLA. Well, his college education changed. Uh, it definitely has changed. <laughs> the guy who bought it made like $25 million off of it, but he was a businessman and that, this is a 19-year-old kid. So anyway, Bob Beck, the physicist, led a very sedentary lifestyle, terrible diet, and he was told in his late 40s that his health was ailing and he'd had the radish and the doctor said, you know, sorry, there's really nothing we can do about it. So he kind of said, well, I'm on the board of all these medical companies. I designed these medical devices. I don't really think I want to take this diagnosis lying down. So he went out and poured through research texts and, and came up with something called the Beck Protocol that I'll talk about a little more in a few minutes. And the first arm of the Beck Protocol, which four different things he came up with, was colloidal silver. So he read the research by Robert Becker on charged silver particles and he went to sleep one night wondering how he could effectively make these charged silver particles and in the morning he woke up with this simple solution in his head that if you have three 9 volt batteries, you get 27 volts and you run them across two silver electrodes in a glass of water it looks like smoke coming off the electrodes into the water. And then what it is is they're emitting tiny charged silver particles. Secondary they're energy. called colloids. Yeah, it's not a solution, it's called a colloid. It's because they're actual particles that are so small that they stay in suspension in the water. And that you could drink that. Now he since, after that he developed a more complicated circuit with, with uh, current limiting and other things in there to make a higher quality um, silver solution, more of an ionic than a colloidal silver. And I use this, like I make this about every other day, I make about a quart of this using my soda instrument silver pulser because this does Bob Beck's electric, blood electrification and colloidal silver generating and it makes a high quality homemade ionic colloidal silver with a very small particle. The downside to silver is if you overdo it, you can turn blue, like for your life. You know, the difference in the so-called monoatomic as opposed to colloidal has to do with the molecular string and the way they structure the material. Are you familiar with all of that? No. Mono okay, no. monoatomic is the big deal with Armus and what they're doing with a what we call a nanometer right. uh, size. I, I know I'm familiar with nanoparticle silvers. Like I also right. buy in stock for myself personal use nano silver from American Biotech Labs because right. that's been proven to deactivate the bonding sites and viruses and right. it's not clear to me whether there's any effectiveness from homemade colloidal and ionic silvers that's the with, big with viruses. Mark right now and why I don't. I use colloidals but I won't use Ormus or what we call monoatomic. Won't go there yet. Platinum and some of the other things that they do with yeah. that. Quite dangerous because in fact my opinion is it's a heavy metal, and I want more research before I'm going to put some of that in my body just as a deal. By the way, all the different metals in your, in your uh, periodic chart have purpose, like copper is, like silver is used like this. Copper is very good for molds. You want to get rid of the molds, like if you have a cedar tree and your roof is gets worn because of the molds that are the growth of that, all you have to do is run a string, of, it's against the law now. Believe it or not, we have laws. <laughs> well, it's building codes. Okay. But if you run a single strip of copper wire across the roof, you won't have molds on your roof. Yeah. And but copper is toxic to people. That is correct. So, the, so one of the silver, magical though, things about yeah. silver is it's really essentially non-toxic. Well, so in the, fact, there's forms of it, you know, yeah. oxides. Right, there, that's true. There are forms. That's so for correct. instance, there's old bad advice 
that yeah, says to add salt to your solution when you're making the colloidal silver and it'll speed it up and you'll get, you'll get it faster. You end up with silver chlorides along with colloidal silvers and they're slightly toxic and not nearly as effective as a bioactive agent against bacteria. So the guy who turned blue, so the guy who turned blue on Fox News, I call him Papa Smurf or whatever his name <laughs> is, <laughs> he, uh, he, he had a skin condition that wasn't responding to pharmaceuticals. So he had real bad psoriasis. So for 16 years, he made a quart of silver a day and he, all, he drank it and he rubbed it all over his skin. And then, then he started having kidney issues. And see, your kidneys will eliminate colloidal silver very quickly from your body. So it's important to take it, if you're fighting something, take it like it's spaced throughout the day. Because a couple hours later, you drink a quart, you kid, your kidneys will get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. So um, his kidneys started having issues. They stopped working well. They stopped taking the silver out of his blood and it came out of his skin. But he probably, for most of those 16 years, made it with salt which is much more prone to, to Argyria is the name of the blue person syndrome. And there's a woman on the internet that the pharmaceutical companies hired to say how terrible colloidal silvers were because look, I turned blue. And she turned blue from taking pharmaceutical silver-based <laughs> drugs you that had who, hundreds uh, of times more silver in them than the colloidal silvers. The, another person that has written about this that you might find interesting is Sir Lawrence Gardner, the Braille King. I mean, there's a historical use with the going all the way back to Egypt using these things. Yeah. Yes. I did a silver bath, and um, within three days, um, I smelled like a garbage truck. Really? I, I had so much junk coming off of me. I had to like shower a couple times a day, and by the sixth day, I just had to quit it because I was like feeling. Well, um, part of the Beck protocol. Okay, I might as well talk about it now since we're talking on this. Let's see if it goes into Beck protocol right here. Nope. Um, the Beck protocol has four different elements in the Beck protocol. There's, there's drinking colloidal silver. And like Rick was saying, there's, there's a, new, a new article in Scientific American a month or two ago on what a huge percentage of your body is actually bacteria and fungus and viruses. Like if you weighed it out, it's like a really significant chunk of my body is some stuff that's hosted and living within me. So Bob Beck found that um, he, he developed this multiple protocol. He started drinking colloidal silver and he found from Albert Einstein University that certain microelectric currents would kill all pathogenic bacteria and viruses in the blood. There's a patent on it that they never commercialized where they had a machine to take their blood out and Elect, you know, run microcurrents through it and kill all the bugs in it and put it back in to work on AIDS and hepatitis C and things like that. And Bob Beck thought, well, you know, that's pretty invasive and nobody's really commercialized it and I want to use this. So he figured out a circuit where you can take a couple of electrodes and plug it into your little generator. And he told the world how to do this. So you can, if you're smart, electrically oriented, you can go out and just look up the thing. But you take this and you put it on your belt and it works off a single nine volt battery. It's got a voltage multiplying thing. And you strap these to your wrists with a, a wet wristband and you sit down and watch TV for an hour. And you turn the dial up until your hand feels kind of uncomfortable and then you stop. And it sort of feels a little weird. But basically, it's, it's electrifying your blood through your skin. So your heart is the pump. You're never piercing your your skin, and you're killing the bacteria and viruses. Now, people in nature paths are using this. They'll take dark field photography. Well, they'll, they'll look at your blood under a microscope, and you'll see all kinds of misshapen cells and all kinds of weird stuff floating along the blood cells in your blood. And, the, you, know, and you get to see this on the microscope. And then you do the Beck protocol for like a month or two. And then they look at it, and all of the weird stuff floating is gone and the blood cells are now like normal and perfect looking and, and everything straight. So, but then he found, and then he realized, that, well, you have a lymph system in the body, which is separate and part of your immune system, and it's not related to the blood system, and you have various glands, and if you're killing all the bugs in your blood through this, it's not touching the lymph, so in these glands. So he developed a magnetic pulsar that would 
you, you sit there and it clicks and clicks and it, it does micro, it induces microelectric currents underneath the pulsing heads. So you hold them under your organs, you know, you let it pulse for a while on like your lymph nodes and your glands and your organs, maybe you're fighting cancer. People are quite effectively using Beck protocol combined with Hall of Clark's herbs and cleanses to, to heal stage fours and five cancers. So. No, that's a zapper. It's different. Oh, it yeah. And uh, people are finding much more success with the Beck protocol supplemented by Holda stuff than Holda stuff alone. Holda stuff alone, you know, works sometimes, doesn't work a lot of the time. Um, and people combining the two are having really, really good successes. Uh, yeah. The silver lung thing I've never heard of, so I'm not sure what you're talking about. The zapper is, is a, a circuit that a lady, Hulda Clark, developed, and there's some controversy as to whether it's really doing what it says or not. I've got one, and I played with it, and it seems to have some effectivity, but you know, not, I haven't found a silver bullet that's perfect for everything. Um, now, the other thing about the Beck Protocol was he found, and this is what comes into what you're talking about, when you're doing all the silver, you're saying you're having all, you're feeling terrible and you're smelling terrible. And what it is is your body has like this 20% of it is these foreign organisms. You start killing them with the pulsing and with the silver and with the, and with the electrifier. And all of a sudden you have what's called a Herxheimer effect. It's toxic overload in the body. It's like all of a sudden you have all this toxic waste because these things that were living within your body are now dead or dying and your body has to eliminate them. And often when people are sick, they're not eliminating very well. Their blood oxygen level is pretty low. So what he found was that if you drink freshly ozonated drinking water, that's O3 instead of O2, it's extremely uh, unstable reactive oxygen molecule is, uh, is ozone. Then immediately if you have a blood oxygen sensor on your fingertip at the, from the doctor and you take some freshly ozonated water, and you've got to make this every day because it's such a unstable molecule that the ozone, two O3 molecules get together and all of a sudden they become three O2 molecules and the ozone's gone. Or they react with heavy metals, they react with other stuff. So anyway, when you drink the highly oxygenated, uh, ozonated water, then it helps your body break down these toxins and the Herxheimer effect drops off like that. Yeah. Right, yeah, and uh, Dr. Um, David Edwards at the Biomedical Center does ozonated treatments and UV treatments on blood too. And, and uh, he does a, a whole bunch of homeopathy. He's down in South Reno. Uh, so here's some cool multi-tools. This is out of my go bag. This is in his go bag. He's got like multiple knives and multi-tools. And uh, like Mr. Sheffield, that's what yeah. I work with. And I can do anything from microelectronics to field trauma. Yeah. So this is kind of like the original. I'm a MacGyver. Yeah. Every, I got my Swiss Army knives in there. There's several sizes. I've got yep. several sizes. Of Sheffield. I can build and make things yep. right there on the spot. That's Most people know the Leathermans and the Swiss Army knives, but this, I think, this this didn't predate Swiss Army knives, no, but it predated Leatherman, I think. It's Sheffield, like yep. my buck knife. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a whole multi, multi, multi tool kit. Okay, well, I'm running kind of long on this, but it, uh, let me, uh, let me just go to see what else I got here. And uh, do you guys mind hanging on like another 20 minutes in this? Okay, okay. Yeah, I just feel like this is kind of like the meat of what people really wanted was, you know, seeing the real stuff. And I got stuff to look at and handle and touch. And, okay, the freshly ozonated water. Okay, soda, here's a story on the Beck Protocol. Bob Beck started <laughs> traveling around and lecturing and he, turned, he gave himself right, about another that. 10 years of good quality life. I mean, he still died fairly young, more, much yeah, younger than Robert Becker, the, the, the guy who, the orthopedic guy. But um, there was an engineer and his wife in British Columbia, Columbia, Okanagan Valley and his wife had chronic fatigue syndrome. She'd been sick for three years. She'd put on like 90 pounds of weight. She'd been very athletic, been the head of, been like vice president of marketing for an athletic apparel place. She couldn't do the laundry. She couldn't shop. She couldn't cook for her kids. 
and she was very suicidal. And they heard about Bob Beck and the Beck Protocol and they thought, well, maybe that will help my condition. So they got in the car and went to Seattle and her husband's an electrical engineer and he and Beck like really hit it off. Yeah. And so Beck gave him the plans for how to make this stuff. He went home, made the circuits. After 30 days of the Beck Protocol, his wife was markedly improved and if 90 days, she was like all better, back to her old self again. So he started a company called SOTA Instruments, S-O-T-A, and he started making the stuff for the Beck Protocol. So it's not cheap because it's not mass produced in really high volumes. And yeah, right. But I mean, for some people, that's totally out of the question. You can make, according to the plans I showed up there, you can make, with parts from Radio Shack, you can make a 3.9 volt battery colloidal silver generator for about 20 bucks. And you can buy the silver wire for about 10 bucks. You can buy a whole bunch of wire online from, I buy it from a place in Santa Fe that's a jewelry supply house. And so for like, for like 30 bucks, 25 bucks, you can make your own made thing. You're gonna have to replace the batteries a lot. It doesn't come with, like I have a nine, I have a nine volt DC adapter in here so that the only time I put batteries in is if I wanna strap it to my waist and use the electrification or if I'm traveling. Like I bring it with me in my trailer and so then I use the batteries. But the rest of the time I just use my DC adapter. Uh, so in this you'll end up using, going through batteries. Uh, but you know, or you can use the solar panels. If you can get 27, at least 22 volts, you can use solar panels and, and run this. So it all depends on your budget. Uh, uh, Matt, uh, yeah. Can you get too much of that? Uh, how do you know if you're drinking too much of that? Well, you know, basically, it, it dep the hard part is gauging how much you're getting. If you're using distilled water, which is what they recommend, you get a very tiny ionic particle, and you won't see any of the smoke coming off the, the rods because it's such a tiny particle, and the, and the, the water will look kind of goldish. And you have to go for like three or four hours with distilled water to get the 10 part per million. But, but if you're seeing like smoke coming off, it looks like silver smoke coming off the rods in the water, and then you've got a more, um, a higher conductive solution, there's more impurities in the water, so it's conducting faster, you get a bigger particle, and then it might only be 15 minutes to give you that 10 part per million. So there's a little, so if you're, if you're doing, I just use deionized water, I have a reverse osmosis filter at home. And me and a bunch of other people use RO water. I don't use the distilled water, and I let it go for about an hour. And, and that seems pretty good. Basically, I try to limit myself. When I'm feeling really sick or something, I'll take, I'll pound a quart in a day. But I don't do a quart a day every day, like, you know, the blue man your, did for 16 uh, your years. Your magic bullet figure is at 50 nanometers. If your particle is 50 nanometers or smaller, it will stay in suspension and will not change the optics. If it's 60 nanometers or larger, then it, at some point you'll see sedimentation and the optics will cloud. You'll see, yeah, yeah that's, that's uh, and at 50 nanometers, you have uh, about a thousand times smaller than your cell wall, which means that anything at 50 nanometers is completely absorbed by the cell. There's, you know, you don't have to go through digestive process. Yeah, and they say, like the, the ABL, American Biotech Labs, the nanometer silver, they basically, they sell it at 10 ppm and in tests you basically can never get argyria from it. You know, you just won't drink enough. And in fact, they, they hired a guy, uh, Dr. Peterson, at the National Institutes for Health Labs in, university, in Utah State University to do a, a viral challenge on the ABL nanometer stuff because they, they were, they owned a silver mine in Clifford Mining in Utah, and due to imports of silver, the price of silver dropped so low from foreign silver that it was costing them more to mine the silver than they could sell it for, and they wanted to keep their guys going. So they started looking into colloidal silvers, and they developed a high voltage process, and they started realizing something's different about this silver from other silvers. And they spent a lot of money on science, and they patented it, and it's a nan true nano silver. And so they sent it out to this NIH lab to do challenge tests with bird flu virus. And they used the super, the super deadly strand of bird flu virus, 70% deadly in human beings. 
Now, luckily, it's not easily transmitted from human beings, but 70% deadly. And they did inoculation tests on rodents with it. And the guy they hired, unknown to them, had read an FDA paper stating that colloidal silver was bogus and didn't work and that it was toxic and bad for people. So he believed the FDA and he thought he was going to – so he went out of his way and did three times the studies he was paid to do. And he was, his goal was to shut down this company and prove how terrible and bad the stuff was. Well, what he found was that you had to drink a swimming pool amount of the stuff to be toxic to the body. It was less toxic than any pharmaceutical, even over-the-counter stuff you can buy, aspirin or anything like that. And that it was far more effective against viruses than any known antiviral from a pharmaceutical co company. So compared to Tamiflu, it was like night and day difference. And so he ended up going from the guy who was hoping to shut down the company because he thought it was totally bogus to joining the company and saying this is like the greatest thing since sliced bread. So in terms of toxicity, I'm just saying here he was actively attempting to prove that this stuff was toxic and he proved the opposite. That, yes? Yes. In fact, preventative measures, I would say drinking like homemade stuff, you know, quarter cup, half cup a day, a few mouthfuls. If you have the nano stuff, a couple of tablespoons a day. And if you're something serious going down or if you feel like you're coming down with something, the nano stuff, you pound a half a cup right away and then you take a tablespoon like five times a day after the first, they call it a bolus. If you're doing it homemade, it's more like, I pound more like a quart if I really feel like I'm coming down with something. And then I go to smaller amounts spaced through the day. Can I add something? Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> I have taken a slightly different direction. Uh, all cancers, body is making cancers all the time. But there are mistakes in the body. What you don't want is this mistake to continue where it metastasizes, you know, goes uh, uh, malignant. Um, the only thing, the first layer of stopping cancers is oxygen. Cancers cannot exist in an oxygen-rich environment. That means the more oxygen you can get at the site, the more likely it is that you're going to eradicate the cancer because you can't exist in that si situation. That's why pharmaceutical mushrooms, all of them, turkey tail, Coriolis, you know, there's a whole series of different ones, Agaricus, Rishi, Mayataki. So these all, what they have are what are called polysaccharides. You have sugars that are about this size. You have beta-glucans that are about this size. They're structurally different. And then you have polysaccharides that are these huge sugar molecules. And what happens is when you eat these sugar molecules, you know, the mushroom, they this is, not, this is not like sugars you buy in the supermarket. These no, are sugars the, the in the... No, sugars are a structural thing that, you know, your sugars that you buy in the market are this size. They're fructose, sucrose sugars. You know, they structurally, they're very small sugars. Then you have beta-glucans, and beta-glucans are sugars, but they look like an invading bacteria. They're not a bacteria, they're sugar. But what happens is the body freaks out, creates NK killer cells, and that's what sharpens your immune system, is the, the, the sugar that's coming into your body looks like uh, an invading bacteria. Now, if you're smart, Nick Beckett took my advice, and you add transfer factor, cholesterol, which then puts that enzyme up on top of a cell looking for that geometry to come into your body, which means you have, right off the get, your mother's immunity to certain kinds of invading bacteria and viruses that are immediately arrested because of the NK killer cells. Yeah. Now, the polysaccharides are these really long, that's another grouping of sugars. And what happens with these sugars is that as the molecule breaks down slowly, oxygen is released on a cellular level. You can't get enough of it. The bad news is if you take too much of it, then you go to the bathroom.